shanti 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 om sapakaya chadhamasya sarvadharma swarupine sapakaya chadhamasya sarvadharma swarupine avatar varishtaya Rama Krishna Yate Nama Asato Masad Gamaya Tamaso Majo Ter Gamaya Bretior Gamaya Om Shanti 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 <coughs> Let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God incarnate, who came to establish religion universal. Let us pray to him to lead us from unreal to real to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. We have been studying Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, where the Master has given a number of uh, spiritual instructions for the sincere seekers in spiritual path. So the topic I am continuing, great teachings. Only we should have open-mindedness, sincerity and strong determination to follow spiritual path. God has provided everything in this world. It is a mixture of everything, good and bad, bitter and sweet. It appears as if the whole thing is a great mystery. If we discover the source of this mystery, the source of this mystery, then we are released from all sufferings we are countering in life. First of all, we must have that zealousness to educate spiritually. Knowledge is infinite. But the knowledge which we are pursuing in this world is secular knowledge, which is useless. It makes you more and more binding into this world. It makes you more and more restless more and more hankering after the things of the world. In nutshell, it makes you utterly worldly. The more you are worldly, the more you are bound. No way to escape from the misery. So, God has given faculty to every one of us to think properly, to act wisely. Is it possible to understand God's action and His motive? 
he creates, he preserves and he destroys. Can we ever understand why he destroys? Sri Ramakrishna said, I say to the Divine Mother, O oh Mother, I do not need to understand. Please give me love for thy lotus feet. And Sri Ramakrishna emphatically declares, the aim of human life is to attain bhakti. To attain devotion. Manmana bhava, mad bhaktaha, Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Become my devotee. He is calling you most affectionately. Come on. Keep your mind in me. Be devoted to me. Bow down to me, worship me, you will certainly reach my abode. What more clear terms we want? So Sri Ramakrishna says, the aim of human life is to attain bhakti, devotion. As for other things, the mother knows best. I have come to the garden to eat mangoes. What is the use of my calculating the number of trees, number of branches and leaves? I only eat the mangoes. I don't need to know the number of trees and leaves. Sri Ramakrishna asked Bankim, I understand you are a great Pandit and have written many books. Please tell me what you think about man's duties. What will accompany what will accompany him after death? You believe in the hereafter, don't you? Bankim said, Hereafter? What is that? Sri Ramakrishna said, True. When a man dies after attaining knowledge, he doesn't have to go to another plane of existence. He is not born again. But as long as he has not attained knowledge, as long as he has not realized God, he must come back to the life of this earth. He can never escape it. For such a person, there is a hereafter. A man is liberated after attaining knowledge, after realizing God. For him there is no further coming back to earth. Sri Ramakrishna gives the example, if a boiled paddy grain is sown, it doesn't sprout. Just so, if a man is boiled by the fire of knowledge, he can't take part in any more. He can't take part anymore in the play of creation. He can't lead a worldly life because he has no attachment to lust and gold. What will he gain by sowing boiled paddy? Bankim said smilingly, Sir, neither does a weed serve the purpose of a tree? Sri Ramakrishna said, But you can't call a jnani a weed. He who has realized God has obtained the fruit of immortality, not a common fruit like a gourd or a pumpkin. He is free from rebirth. He is not born anywhere on earth, in the solar world, or in the lunar world. And Bankim said, no, not Bankim, Sri Ramakrishna said, analogy is one-sided. You are a Pandit. Haven't you read logic? Suppose you say that a man is as terrible as a tiger. That doesn't mean that he has a fearful tail 
or a tiger's pot face. I said the same thing to Keshav. He asked me, Sir, is there an afterlife? I didn't commit myself either way. I said that the potters put their pots in the sun to bake. Among them, you see both baked and soft pots. Sometimes cattle trample over them. When the baked pots are broken, the potters throw them away. But when the soft ones are broken, they keep them. They mix them with water and put the clay on the wheel and make new pots. They don't throw away the unbaked pots. So I said to Keshav, the potter won't let you go as long as you are unbaked. He will put you on the wheel of the world as long as you have not attained knowledge. As long as you have not realized him. He won't let you go. You will have to return to the earth again and again. There is no escape. You will be liberated. You will be liberated only when you realize God. Then alone will the potter let you go. It is because then you won't serve any purpose in this world of Maya. Maya means illusion. The Jnani has gone beyond Maya. What will he do in this world of Maya? But God keeps some Jnanis in the world of Maya to be teachers of men. In order to teach others, the Jnani lives in the world with the help of Vidya Maya. It is God himself who keeps the Jnani in the world for his work. Such was the case with Shukadeva and Shankaracharya. Sri Ramakrishna said, If you enter the world without first cultivating love for God, you will be entangled more and more. You will be overwhelmed with its danger, its grief, its sorrows. And the more you think of worldly things, the more you will be attached to them. First, rub your hands with oil and then break open the jackfruit. Otherwise, they will be smeared with its sticky milk. First, secure the oil of divine love and then set your hands to the duties of the world. But one must go into solitude to attain this divine love. To get, a, to get butter from milk, you must let it set into curd in a secluded spot. If it is too much disturbed, milk won't turn into curd. Next, you must put aside all other duties, sit in a quiet spot and churn the curd. Only then do you get butter. Further, by meditating on God in solitude, the mind acquires knowledge, dispassion and devotion. But the very same mind goes downward if it dwells in the world. In the world, there is only one thought, lust and gold, kama kanchan. The whole world is dancing because of that. Kama kanchan. The world is water and the mind milk. If you pour milk into water, they become one. You can't find the pure milk anymore. But turn the milk into curd and churn it into butter. Then when that butter is placed in water, it will float. So, practice spiritual discipline in solitude and obtain the butter of knowledge and love. Even if you keep that butter in the water of the world, the two will not mix. The butter will float. Together with this, you must practice discrimination. What is that? Lust and gold is impermanent. God is the only eternal substance. 
what does a man get with money food clothes and a dwelling place nothing more you can reach as god with yourself na karma nana prajaya dhanena tage naike amrutatva manushu mahana upanishad says god immortality cannot be attained by progeny or by actions in the world or by wealth immortality is attained only through tyaga therefore money can never be the goal of life that is the process of discrimination do you understand again master said discrimination about objects consider what is there in money or in a beautiful body discriminate and you will find that even the body of a beautiful person consists of bones flesh fat and other disagreeable things why should a person give up god and direct his attention to such things why should a person forget god for their sake the wise way to live is therefore you have to apply wisdom god has given us that faculty we are not using it properly it has become blunt and we are behaving like fools the more worldly you are means you are confirming you are more foolish so the wise way to live is to plan purposefully prepare prayerfully proceed positively and persistently pursue life's heaviest burden is one's fight with life there are two ways to live one is fight with life and the other is to flow with life like a wise person to fight with life is like fighting with one's source life is like unto a mother it is a source and so fighting with it is foolish there may be conflicts in life learn to create harmony in conflict not chaos in conflict in aiki jujutsu a form of martial art if someone attacks you your first response is acceptance then flow with it it may appear as if you are cooperating with your enemy unless you learn the art it is impossible for you to understand in judo you throw off your enemy with gentleness one has to learn to cooperate in the face of problems and flow with it instead of fighting with your problem you end up in solving it how does one become powerful in life the question is a symptom of a disease called addiction to power society is in a mad quest for power power of money power of position and so on this power seems to validate one's identity this is an illusory fulfillment we want to be powerful because we feel impotent insecure and weak each obstacle we face makes us feel helpless the very desire to attain power is one of the greatest obstacles in the path to wisdom drop this craze to become powerful just be wise you will flow with life one has to define one's identity the right way 
if your identity is based on name or fame or property or position then all this will be taken away your outer life may assume present forms but your inner life is based on a wrong foundation what are you based on draw a distinction between the mechanical effort and conscious effort so often our effort is mechanical or based on conditioning culture or religion just because you have been born into a particular religion the effort you make is based on what is mechanical your effort does have not vision or sharpness there is another level of effort that is called conscious effort remember always to allow conscious passes in your life followed by conscious direction and a conscious shock pass for a moment are you caught up in this rat race be conscious let there be direction in your life and then motivate yourself in the process constantly give yourself a shock in order to push yourself on to the right path the wise path what is most important therefore is to control and master the mind you must know the function of the mind properly and you must know the technique of handling the mind there is a story of the monkey the snake and the goat a snake charmer moved from village to village to entertain folks with his acrobatic team of a monkey a snake and a goat once while wading across a river he balanced the snake basket on his head sat the monkey on his shoulder and guided the goat with his hand the water level was now was low but there flowed a strong current the charmer cautiously took his steps with an eye on all three of his team monkey snake and the goat midway where the force was fierce enough to drag away the goat he tightened his grip on it the other two were safe above or were they the monkey by nature was mischievous it was restless and couldn't resist playing a game it slowly opened the snake basket <laughs> the snake what is the darkness of the basket sprung up with his head high and tongue hissing the sound and fury frightened the monkey and it fell into the water the current began to drag the monkey away a split second effort to save the monkey threw the charmer off balance and he dropped the snake basket into the stream to catch hold of the basket he lost his grip on the goat within seconds all three of his companions the monkey the snake and the goat were carried away by the current in real life our mind is the monkey it is restless and difficult to predict many times it causes troubles and leads us into serious trouble instead of helping us float across the ocean of life it throws us into the ocean mind which behaves like a monkey therefore it is wise that we control and master our mind shri ramakrishna seated himself in the drawing room on the ground floor of devendra's house the devotees sat around him it was evening 
The room was well lighted. The Engar Narain, Ram, M, Girish, Devendra, Akshay, Upendra, and some other devotees were present. As the master cast his glance on a young devotee, his face beamed with joy. Pointing to the devotee, Sri Ramakrishna said to the others, "He is totally free from attachment to land, wife, and money." the three things that entangle one in worldliness the mind that dwells on these three cannot be fixed on god he saw a vision tell us what did you see the devotee said laughingly i saw a heap of dung some were seated on it and some sat at a distance master said it was a vision of the plight of the worldly people who are forgetful of god it shows that all these desires are disappearing from his mind need one worry about anything if one's mind is detached from lust and gold how strange only after much meditation and japa could i get rid of these desires and how quickly he could banish them from his mind is it an easy matter to get rid of lust sri ramakrishna said i myself felt a queer sensation in my heart 6 months after i had begun my spiritual practice then i threw myself on the ground under a tree and wept bitterly i said to the divine mother mother if it comes to that i shall certainly cut my throat with a knife to the devotees Sri Ramakrishna said, "If the mind is free from lust and gold, then what else can obstruct a person? He enjoys then only the bliss of Brahman." Is it an easy thing to obtain the knowledge of Brahman? It is not possible unless the mind is annihilated. The Guru said to the disciple. give me your mind and i shall give you knowledge in this state one enjoys only spiritual tact and the company of devotees to ram shri ramakrishna said you are a physician you know that medicine works only when it mixes with the patient's blood and becomes one with it likewise in the state of brahma gyan one sees god both within and without one sees that it is god himself who has become the body mind life and soul yam master mahesh said to himself assimilation master said a man attains brahma gyan as soon as his mind is annihilated with the annihilation of the mind dies the ego which says i i i one also attains the knowledge of brahman by following the path of devotion one also attains it by following the path of knowledge that is to say discrimination the gyan is discriminate saying neti neti not this not this all this is illusory like a dream they analyze the world through the process of not this not this it is maya when the world vanishes only the jeevas that is to say so many egos remain each ego may be likened to a pot suppose there are 10 pots filled with water and the sun is reflected in them how many suns do you see devotee answers 10 reflections besides there certainly exists this real sun master said suppose you break one pot how many suns do you see now nine reflected suns but there certainly exists the real sun master said all right suppose you break nine pots how many suns do you see now devotee said one reflected sun but there certainly exists the real sun master said to grish 
what remains when the last part is broken giri said that real son sir master no what remains cannot be described what is remains how will you know there is a real sun unless there is a reflected sun i consciousness is destroyed in samadhi a man climbing down from samadhi to the lower plane cannot describe what he has seen there it was late in the evening lamps were burning in the drawing room shri ramakrishna was in a spiritual mood the devotees sat around him shri ramakrishna said in an ecstatic mood there is no one else here so i am telling you this he who from the depth of his soul seeks to know god will certainly realize him he must he alone who is restless for god and seeks nothing but him will certainly realize him those who belong to this place referring to himself shri ramakrishna have already come those who will come from now on are outsiders such people will come now and then the divine mother will tell them do this call on god in this way why doesn't man's mind dwell on god you see more powerful than god is his maya mahamaya his power of illusion more powerful than the judge he is his orderly all left rama said to narad i am very much pleased with your prayer ask a boon of me narad replied oh ram may i have pure devotion to your lotus feet and may i not be deluded by your world bewitching maya rama said be it so ask for something else narad replied no ram no i don't want any other boon every one is under the spell of this world bewitching maya when god assumes a human body he too comes under the spell rama wandered about weeping for sita brahman weeps entangled in the snare of the five elements but you must remember this god by his mere will can liberate himself from this snare bhavanath a devotee he said the god of railway train shuts himself of his own will in a carriage but he can get out whenever he wants to master said the ishwar kotis divine incarnations for instance can liberate themselves whenever they want to but the jeeva kotis cannot jeevas are imprisoned by lust and gold when the doors and windows of a room are fastened with screws how can a man get out bhavana said smilingly ordinary men are like the third class passengers on a railway train when the doors of their compartments are locked they have no way to get out giris said if a man is so strongly tied hand and foot then what is his way shri ramakrishna said he has nothing to fear if god himself as a guru cuts the chain of maya shri ramakrishna said i said to captain god is far far away from the worldly minded but god is very near the man nay within a distance of 3 cubits whose mind is free from worldliness speaking of rakhal captain said he eats with all sorts of people perhaps he had heard it from hazra thereupon i said to him a man may practice intense austerity and japa but he won't achieve anything if his mind dwells on the world but blessed is the man who keeps his mind on god even though he eats pork he will certainly realize god in due time hazra with all his austerity and japa doesn't allow an opportunity to slip an opportunity to slip by far earning money 
as a broker. Sri Yama asked humbly, how sir may we fix our minds on God? Sri Ramakrishna said, repeat God's name and sing His glories and keep holy company and now and then visit God's devotees and holy men. The mind cannot dwell on God if it is immersed day and night in worldliness, in worldly duties and responsibilities. It is most necessary to go into solitude now and then and think of God. To fix the mind on God is very difficult in the beginning unless one practices meditation in solitude. When a tree is young, it should be fenced all around. Otherwise, it may be destroyed by cattle. To meditate, you should withdraw within yourself or retire to a secluded corner or to the forest. And you should always discriminate between the real and the unreal. God alone is real, the eternal substance. All else is unreal, that is impermanent. By discriminating thus, one should shake off impermanent objects from the mind. The life of a spiritual aspirant in the world is verily like a fierce struggle and fight with deadly serpent. Samsar, our worldly life, is a terrible and deadly serpent. Man must keep constant and alert watchfulness lest the samsar sarpa takes you unawares. Keep the twin eyes of viveka and vichara, discrimination and inquiry, wide open. At times the man becomes poisoned in the course of his avahara, worldly activities. He must retire periodically from the worldly atmosphere and take recourse to satsang, sadhana, seclusion and silent meditation. This is a spiritual sanjeevani, a herb for you to revive yourself and enter the daily spiritual life again without fear. Satsang and seclusion, satsang and seclusion are the magic herbs which remove completely all poison of worldliness from you. Within their help, with their help, you will keep yourself safe. The Supreme Lord of all creations gives to the jiva this precious human body in which to cultivate all the good things of life. The jiva listening to the promptings of its lower nature allows the body to get into the possession of innumerable evil gunas, evil qualities. They dominate the person and make the jiva helpless. The evil qualities take such strong hold upon him that later on when he tries to acquire virtues and to develop yama and niyama there commences a regular challenge. The old vicious vrittis, thought waves and impressions in the subconscious mind do not allow virtues to gain entry. The revolt and push them out. But when the aspirant in this helpless condition prays sincerely to the Lord for strength, then the grace of the Lord gives him the necessary inner force which enables him to throw out his old viciousness and to obtain the fruits of sadhana. Desire is a great obstacle, a great barrier in the path of self-realization. Control of mind means really abandoning desires. If one wants to discipline the mind perfectly well, one must give up all desires without reserve, all longings for worldly objects and building castles in the air. The monkey-like mind will always be restless, desiring something or other. Just as the fish taken out of water tries to get into water by some means or other, so also the mind will always entertain evil thoughts killing all the desires ruthlessly, controlling the mind, freeing it from the surging emotions and bubbling thoughts, one can attain the one-pointedness of mind. Such a mind will be as calm as a lamp in a windless place. One who attains such a state of mind can meditate for a long time. Meditation will come by itself. 
if one allows one's mind to run towards the worldly things as per its own wish and to entertain unholy thoughts and evil desires one will surely meet with destruction in the end therefore give up desire have always that one idea to attain that supreme abode the abode of joy peace bliss and immortality so these are the great teachings shri ramakrishna has given us in the gospel of shri ramakrishna let us try to follow them honestly the substance of this topic is we must get rid of worldliness as long as there is worldliness the person is far away from god so reducing worldliness is important to focus the mind on the divine presence of god who dwells in our heart thank you page 1000 gospel of shri ramakrishna the next morning m was sitting alone under a tree in the garden he said to himself shri ramakrishna has made the brothers of the monastery renounce lust and gold oh how eager they are to realize god this place has become a veritable vaikuntha and the brothers living here are embodiments of narayan it is not many days since the master passed away that's why all the ideas and ideals he stood for there all the ideas and ideals he stood for are there almost intact the same ayodhya only rama is not there the master has made these brothers renounce their homes why has he kept a few in the world is there no way of liberation for them from a room upstairs narendra saw m sitting alone under the tree he came down and said with a smile Hello, M. What are you doing? After a little conversation, M said to him, "Oh, you have such a sweet voice. Please sing a hymn." Narendra sang the following hymn to Shiva, in which the devotee prays for forgiveness for his sins. Even before I saw the light of this world, my sins from previous births. through which i passed because of desire for the fruit of my deeds punished me as i lay in my mother's womb there i was boiled in the midst of filthy things who can describe the pain that afflicts the child in its mother's womb therefore o shiva o mahadeva o shambhu forgive me i pray for my transgressions in childhood my suffering never came to an end my body was covered with filth and i craved for craved for my mother's breasts over my body and limbs i had no control i was pursued by troublesome flies and mosquitoes day and night i cried with the pain of many an ailment forgetting the o shankara therefore o shiva o mahadeva o shambhu forgive me i pray for my transgressions in youth the venomous snakes of sound sight taste touch and smell bit into my vitals and slew my discrimination as i engrossed i was engrossed in the pleasures of wealth sons and a youthful wife alas my heart bereft of the thought of shiva was filled with arrogance and pride therefore o shiva o mahadeva o shambhu forgive me i pray for my transgressions now in old age my senses have lost the power of proper judging and acting my body though still not wholly bereft of life is weak and sterile from many afflictions from sins and illness and bereavements but even now my mind instead of meditating on shiva 
runs after vain desires and hollow delusions therefore o shiva o mahadeva o shambhu forgive me i pray for my transgressions the duties laid down in the smriti perilous and abstruse are now beyond me how can i speak of the vedic injunctions for brahmins as means for attaining brahman for attaining brahman how can i speak of the vedic injunctions for brahmins as means for attaining brahman never yet have i rightly grasped through discrimination the meaning of hearing the scriptures from the guru and reasoning on his instruction how then can i speak of reflecting on truth wisdom without interruption therefore o shiva o mahadeva o shambhu forgive me i pray for my transgressions it's a long poem let us stop here chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within O name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart O bring its cup to the edge of thy self O self drown deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bath for very souls various are thy names O lord in each and every name thy power resides no times are set no rites are need for for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my wretchedness who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name o may mind be humbler than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree take no honor to thyself give honor to all chant and sing in glee the name of the lord o lord and soul of the universe mine is no prayer for while to return you the playthings of lust or the ties of fame as many times as i may be reborn grant me o lord I set false love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet. Oh, how I long for the day when an instant's separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years. When my heart burns away with his desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be, in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thy norms nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who still as the hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt for thou art my heart's beloved thou and thou alone o lord lead us from the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good may all be actuated by noble thoughts May all joys everywhere. May all be happy. May all be free from disease. May all realize what is good. May none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous. May the virtuous attain tranquility. May the tranquil be free from bonds. May the free make others free. May good be at all people. May the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the restorer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works, be satisfied. For He being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied. <laughs>